Hello. Are we there? I still see our start. There we go. Hi. Welcome. I'm excited to be here at Craftsy doing a Craftsy chat. Today, what we're going to talk about, um, how to make that little corner of your collars that leads into your extension, how to make that really crisp and super clean. All right. And I welcome any questions um, going forward. If you have them, just pipe up and ask as we go. I always like to answer the question as it is, um, as it comes up. All right, so what we're working on, I'm gonna show you the pattern first, just so you have an idea of, of what, what you're seeing on paper and how it's gonna to translate to fabric. So let me grab that. We have, well, let's look at, let's see what's on the dress form first. That's always helpful. Okay, this is what we're gonna be working on. This is called a camp collar. The collar comes together at the center front, as opposed to what I'm wearing, which is a collar with band. Though there's a little crossover um, on um, how to sew a collar with band and how to sew this, um, this camp collar. Anyway, we're going to focus on the camp collar. Notice how it comes together nicely right there at the center front, okay? Um, and that is happening because the collar does not go through the extension. And I'm gonna show you on the one on the table as well. You'll be able to see it a little bit better. But this is what we're working on. With collars, you wanna make sure your sewing is spot on. You really wanna practice that, that sewing on, um, the sewing on collars because people notice it right away. They're looking at your face. When they're coming up, they're saying hello. They're, this is where they're looking. So that collar needs to be sewn really well to the best of your ability, okay? And getting the edges and the points and everything even is super important in having that collar look really symmetrical and really clean and crisp on your body. Okay, so let's look at our pattern and then we're going to move on. Um, Katie's asking, what is the camp collar and what makes it so special? Great question. It's easy. And it comes out beautifully every single time. So let's take a look at it. I'm gonna move over to a different camera here and we are going to take a look at this collar. Okay, this is the camp collar. It's an all-in-one collar. Give me a second here. I'm just gonna pull this camera up a little bit so we have more of a view. Okay, this is the camp collar. It's an all-in-one collar um, this is the upper collar. This is the under collar. What you draft, and you can find this collar in the Building Patterns textbook um, that, I, that I have at Apparel Arts, if you want to take a look at that. This, this is the, the collar that you draft. This right here is the center back. You, you just draft this part of it. Super easy. You start out with a rectangle, you drop it down here, raise it up right here an inch to get a little bit of a bias curve right here. Um, and then you draw straight across here. This is a right angle. And then you come down for your collar point. Your collar point um, is going to end up uh, right here. So you draft this and then you trace it off here to the other side and then you trace it off above so you end up with an upper collar and an under collar on one pattern piece. It's cut on bias, cut on full bias. This fold line here is actually your outer collar edge, and this is your neckline. I like to interface the entire collar. These green diagonal lines are showing interfacing. And then of course you have your notches for center back and where it's gonna hook up to the shoulder. So the camp collar is good because it is, it is foolproof. It comes out so crisp and tailored every time. And it's used a lot, kind of gets its name because it's used a lot on um, like we'll say Hawaiian shirts, shirts that um, that are pretty casual. So it's a, a more casual version of the collar with band. The band isn't involved. It's just putting the collar on. Okay. So it's pretty quick and easy. Now, now that you saw that collar, let's look at it on the um, my sewn sample here. 
Okay, you saw what was on the dress form, but this is what we're looking to do right here. Do you see how clean that is right there? This is the collar. The collar is going to come down like this. All right, you see that? Just like this. We have to have a little extension right here. I'll put my hand back there so you can see. There's an extension from here to here that has to be really clean. And I'm going to show you how to sew that. I've sewn half this collar and then I'm going to um, show you the other half. Okay, so we also have a, um, a button extension on this. All right, let me show you that. So you have a little point of reference here. Um, here's the pattern. Also, you can find this in the building patterns under the standard button placket. Center front extension is always the size of the button. If I'm using a 5 8 of an inch button, I'm going to be using a 5 8 of an inch extension. Okay, so you can see these buttons on here like this. Okay, extension is always the size of the button. And then you're facing is going to be extension times two if you're using vertical buttonholes or extension times two plus a quarter if you're using horizontal buttonholes. So this facing is gonna fold back like this, okay? Just like this. And when I sew the collar, the collar is gonna get sewn to the, if this is my collar, this is going to get sewn to the center front notch, not all the way through. Okay, that's important, and I'll get to that here shortly. So this collar is going to get sewn, if that's our seam allowance, seam allowance. It's important that the collar just gets sewn to the center front, not through the extension. So how do we make this really clean and tailored looking? Okay, I'll show you. All right, so first thing, you're gonna cut out your collar. Interface your whole collar, and then you are going to just fold this back, and you're gonna sew just down the edges here, okay? So you're gonna sew, I use half inch seam allowance, you might use five eighths or something different. You're gonna sew just down like this, okay? Um, I've done this on, the, on my sample, I'm gonna show you in a minute. You just sew down the edges, trim it down to a quarter, clip your corner and turn it out. Let me show you on my sample right here. I have this sewn already. So you can see my interfaced collar. All right, I have this one interfaced on this sample. So on my collar, you're gonna sew down half an inch and then um, trim it down to a quarter, clip into um, the point right here. And it's not enough to clip, you know what, let me show you on this one. I'm gonna use a contrasting thread so it shows up. So let me show you just on this one side here. And so you're gonna pin your collar. I have my sewing machine right here. You're gonna hear it going. I put a blue thread in this so it shows up so you can see it. You know, of course, you're always gonna match your thread. So let me show you. So first thing you're gonna do before, before you put the collar on is treat the edges, okay? All right, so I've just sewn that right along here. Now, what you're gonna need to do is trim this down to a quarter, maybe even a little bit less, just like this, okay? And then here, at this point right here, always clip at a diagonal. Get rid of some of that bulk in the corner. And usually what you want to think about doing is cutting back an inch. So if I measure off an inch right here, see, I measured off an inch from the point. That's actually where you need to start cutting in a little bit to get to that corner to reduce bulk, okay? See, I did a quarter here, and then at an inch away, I dip. I started to dip in and veer toward that corner to get rid of the bulk. Don't ever cut closer than an eighth, though. Um, 
if you can help it, because if you cut closer than an eighth to the point, it's really easy when you're turning it out to poke a hole in it. Okay, so we have this, then, and this is interfaced, then you're just gonna turn it and you're going to use your point turner, okay? And you're going to work that edge out, okay? With your point turner. Something that is actually kind of helpful too is if you get some forceps, that helps turn out a corner as well. But I tend to just grab this, it's an easy tool. So you wanna take some time to work out that corner right there, this edge right here, because that's gonna be, that's gonna show. It's, it's close to your face, so you want to get those corners looking really, really good. Um, or those edges, I should say. They're not, they're, they're kind of like pointy little edges rather than corners. So you're going to work that out, okay? You're going to do that on both sides. I've already done that on my sample. <clears throat> so you can see I have a nice clean edge right here. One side of my sample is done. The other side is not, okay? I'm going to use this as reference. So... This is what you're going for, something super clean right in here, and you want that edge right there to be razor sharp and very tailored. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to create the edges of our collar, which I just showed you how to do. And again, I have it done on this one, okay? And something that's really important, once you sew the edges of your collar, let's pop over to here. Let's see, I think this will be a good view right here. Um, once you, you've sewn these edges of your collar right here, it's really important to put them together before you put your collar, any collar, not just this one, before you put this collar into a garment, make sure you put your edges together like this and, um, and make sure that the points look the same and that the length from here to here to the edge is the same. Make sure it's a mirror image all the way across from center back to the points. And if it's not, go back in and fix it. Because it will be apparent when you sew this in um, if you your widths are off. It will show up, and it's, and it's a bummer. So after you're done shaping it and creating the collar, fold it in half. Make sure it matches. If it doesn't, go in and make it match. One thing I really love about this collar is it's on a fold. The outer collar edge is on a fold. So it's always really crisp right along here. And it always matches when you fold it because it's its own fold line. Brilliant. Okay. Um, all right. So again, I've done this side. Let's go over to here. So in order to get this really clean and have a nice edge like we have on this side, you want to fold in your um, extension, okay? So here is my extension and my facing business here, all right? Let's mark this so you can see. This right here, that's my center front, okay? This here, this is the edge of my extension, okay? That was my 5 eighths extension because I'm using a 5 eighths button. Then I have vertical buttonholes. Um, uh, is that what I did on this one? No, I think I did horizontal. Yeah, I did, hor I did horizontal buttons, buttonholes, or I'm going to. So this from here to here is the facing, okay? Um, so let's write that in so you really see what we have here. That's the facing, okay? This is the extension. This is the center front. At the edge of a facing, only use quarter inch seam allowance to fold in. If you use more than a quarter, if there's a half inch or even a five eighths of an inch seam allowance in here, once you put those buttonholes on, that seam allowance is gonna jam right up against it. Your buttonholes are gonna look uneven because in certain areas that buttonhole is sewing over two layers plus interfacing. In as it goes toward the edge, it's gonna be sewing over four layers because it'll be sewing over your seam allowance. So keep a minimal amount of seam allowance at a quarter of an inch, okay? At a quarter of an inch from the edge. All right, um, so then this is gonna be pressed. Always press your, um, your facing and your seam allowance in before you put a collar on, okay? Get those memory lines in there, those crease lines in there. 
Now we have our collar, okay? So our collar's been sewn. In this case, some collars, when you're sewing, you only sew down to the seam allowance, which is like right here. This one you can sew all the way through to the, to the base because it's going to be enclosed in this fold right here. All right. So correct sides together. You want to bring this collar up to the center front line. Okay. That's my center front line. Don't bring it all the way through the extension. You're just bringing it to the center front line, which is right here. Correct sides together, just like this. All right. One other great thing about this, um, this collar, since it's on a fold, you really don't have to pay too much attention to um, upper collar, under collar, because the whole thing is interfaced and, um, uh, and there's a fold right here. So we don't have any cheating of the seam at the edge of the collar. Okay, so bring this up. You have to make sure, so here's my half inch seam allowance, okay? You want to make sure that the edge of the collar is on that um, half inch line right there. Meaning, here's my half inch seam on the collar is right here. So I have to make sure that's touching the line, not just up here, okay? So it could maybe even go over that notch a little bit, but it has to touch all the way down to where my half inch seam is. Let's talk about seam allowance here for a sec in your collar. The, in factories, they use quarter inch seam allowance around collars and necklines. I like to use half an inch and then cut it down to a quarter. When I use a quarter inch seam, um, I feel like I don't have as much control over it in case it starts to fray. Or if I wanna take it out and do it again, um, if you have a quarter seam, sometimes it's hard to seam rip because it's, it encourages the fraying. So I use half an inch and then I cut it down to a quarter later, okay? In factories, they're gonna use a quarter inch seam because they, they're moving faster um, and uh, they don't have time to get in there and cut, okay? So you can use whatever seam allowance you want. Ultimately, you should cut down to um, a quarter. Okay, so here we are with this. And where are my pins? Here they are. Okay. Now I have it up to the center front line and um, I'm just going to secure this here just for a second. Then I'm going to fold this back. I'm not folding it on my center front line. I'm folding it on the crease I created at the edge of my extension. Okay. So I'm folding it like this and I already have my seam allowance folded in and I'm folding it on the extension line, not the center front. So I actually have this area right here. There's no collar in this little five eighths of an inch area, which is my extension. The collar stops here. And then I'm just gonna be, I'm just sewing on my um, fabric without the collar. So make sure like even this, see how that slipped a little? Let's scoot that over. I check, check, and double check. Sometimes I'll go in and just baste it right here. In fact, let's do that. I'll come back to you. Um, let's see. I'm just going to go here and baste this to make sure it doesn't move. Let me do that, and then I'm going to come back to you here in a second. Let me look this up. Uh, okay. Let's see. Clear that, and then we'll go to basting. I'm coming back to you. Hang on. Okay, let's do this. All right, I'm using blue thread on this. See, I just basted it right here to make sure it's not going to shift. Because sometimes when you go back over it, now I can't see my collar. And I can't see if it's shifting or dropping or doing anything that it shouldn't be doing. So just a couple of basting stitches is going to keep that exactly where I need it to be. Okay. Now I'm going to fold this over here, all right? And remember, folding on the edge of my extension, not on my center front. Bring everything level right here, and I'm going to sew, okay? And I want to sew from this side because I want to stop or start right here. I don't, if I, 
I can't, I don't want to, in this part of it, I don't want to sew beyond this point, okay? And if I'm sewing from this side, I can't see where to stop. I have to stop right here. I'm not sewing all the way across. I'm just focused on this first inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, okay? So I have this right here. Now, because it's on a curve, set yourself up for success by um, marking your seam allowance. Okay, again, I'll do this with the Sharpie. I don't recommend using a Sharpie, of course. Just, it just shows up better. So I'm marking my whole, all my half inch seam. Okay, there we go. Half inch seam right along here. I have it marked so I can follow it perfectly. The reason I like to mark it um, is because I can, um, let's jump over to here. I like to mark it because I'm, I'm trying to keep everything in line and not have it slip. So I'm thinking of a lot of things while I'm sewing this on because you have, you want to be really precise. So I like to mark it, even though I've done this collar, excuse my arm many times, I want to mark it because I want to make sure I hit this perfectly. This is a part that's going to show it's integral to getting to the success of this collar. So I want to make sure I sew it properly on my seam line. Okay. So there I have my half, whoops, there we go. I have my half inch seam right along here. Okay. And it's catching a bit of the collar. Okay. Let's go back over here and now what are we going to do? We're going to trim this. Let's get rid of our threads. Clip your threads as you go so they don't get tangled when you're sewing. We have this. We're not even dealing with this part over here. It's just this part. Um, so we're going to cut. Okay. I'm going to cut this down to an eighth. All right. Let's cut this off right here. So I cut this down to an eighth, kind of right here. All right, got rid of that. Okay. Now, in here, what I like to do, I I need to cut this down to this stitch right here, in order to be able to turn this out effectively. So I'm going to go in. I have to cut to my stitching right here. You can see where the tip of my scissor is. Notice that I'm cutting this at an angle, okay? Rather than straight down into it, go at an angle with the scissors angled toward the edge right here because it'll give you um, a little bit of, see how that's at an angle right there? You want that, it'll, it will tuck up. If I'm at an angle, see? I have a slight angle on this guy right here. It helps me tuck this up and not get a fray right here in the corner. If I cut at an angle with the scissors, the um, kind of, you want the scissor more toward the edge, not in this way, toward the neckline, out like this. You'll get this kind of um, angled piece right there, which will tuck in better and give you a cleaner corner right here. But you do need to clip right to your stitching, which is so scary. You have to clip right to that stitching right there. If you don't, you're going to get a pucker. Okay. So you have to be brave. You're interfaced up. You should be fine. Just clip at a diagonal, nice sharp scissors. You'll be fine. Okay. Now we need to turn this out. Okay. So I'm just going to turn out this little bit right here, get my point turner, get that nice and yeah, that looks great. You're seeing my Sharpie marks. Um, but aside from that, we're getting a super clean edge right here. And look at that corner right there. It's really strong and it is, it's really tailored, okay? Let's look on our other side where we don't have our Sharpie marks. See, really clean right here. Across here, it's sewn right across here, very um, strong. Sorry, that's my iron. Um, it's, it's all nice and strong and it's really, it's, it's very sharp. That's what you want in collars. Keep them nice and sharp, and then they'll, they'll look super pro. Okay, now let's take our, let's just our basting right there. Now let's iron that little bit right there. 
Okay, and I admire what you're doing. Looks good. Again, don't use a Sharpie. It helps when I teach to have it show up. But of course, don't ever let those Sharpies touch your fabric unless it's a muslin. Okay. All right, great. We got that. But now we're open from here to here. So what do we do? So now we're going to go in and we're going to sew our, basically our under collar, this side, to the neckline. Okay, just like this. So, and again, I have my other side done. You already see it trimmed. So I'm gonna start sewing like this. I prefer to start sewing from this edge to my center back, okay? Even though I just did one side um, and I'm doing this side now, I never sew from here all the way through the center back to the other side because you're probably gonna be off by the time you get to the end right? Because of the way the machine kind of works like that. Always sew collars from the center back, from either center back out, center back out, or from this edge here to the center back, this edge here to the center back. All right. Collars should always go center back out basically, or in. Um, so you're not off when you get to the end, but also so you don't get drag lines on your collar or your neckline. It helps to either go um, to the center back or out from the center back. Super important, okay? Helps you hit your notches and all of that. So here, I'm going to start sewing here. Make sure that edge is, is all clean. You want to um, align the edges of the neckline with the under collar, okay? And you should have notches to help you align your shoulder. One thing with your um, shoulder notch, what I find is the shoulder notch, um, you don't necessarily, I, I'm a, a stickler when it comes to sewing. However, this is one area where I give myself and my students some leeway. The shoulder notch, um, because Usually the shape of the neckline is nice and round. The shape of the collar is very flat. Let's take a look. Okay, let's look at this. We have a neckline here, very round. And then here's our collar, kind of fairly straight. So you're working with opposing curves, if you will. And those opposing curves can um, uh, make those notches not quite aligned. If, especially if they weren't put on like parallel or perpendicular to the center of the piece, they can go off a little bit like that. So I take my shoulder notch, as long as it's within an eighth of an inch and it's all fitting, I'm okay with that. That's one notch where I don't really become too much of a stickler. Okay, now, um, here we go. I'm lining up my edges. If you find you are, yeah. If you find it's, it's a little bit tight maybe, again, you're dealing with two different curves. You could always do, usually on the bodice edge, just some very minor eighth of an inch clips along the edge. Just a tiny little clip, not to your, not to your seam line, just a tiny eighth of an inch will often kind of spread it so you can align your edges better, okay? But again, it's not as important to align the edges as it is to align your seam, which is often half an inch down or quarter inch down. All right, so this is loose. I'm just sewing the neckline to the under collar, okay? So let's jump over and do that um, here. And again, I'm, I'm not matching my thread, but you will pull everything out of the way. Okay, and we're going to start right in that. We're going to start basically where we stopped. Okay, like this. And let's start here. And we're going to back tack. Pay attention to your seam allowance. I'm a little, little high on that side, but we will move on. Okay, there we go. Now we're all aligned again. Make sure, see how I'm taking my hands and I'm like pulling the the work away from the needle so I don't get any puckers or not catching anything that doesn't need to be kept to be caught. 
Okay, so we're going around like this. All right. You should be able to sew this pretty easily. I am kind of leaning over a camera that's in front of me. Okay, so this should not be, <laughs> this won't be as hard as I'm making it look. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna catch up with my stitching on the other side. Okay, back tack. All right, okay. Just sewed that. Let's go back over here. All right. Now, before you close this up, you will always want to check. Did you catch anything? Are there any puckers? Nope. That all looks good. Looks like it's a great connection right here. Everything's looking good. Check for any puckers. Something that's important. Let's say you did get a pucker in here you caught maybe you caught some of the yolk or something like that if that's the case don't take out the whole thing if the rest of it is good just seam rip an inch above the pucker an inch um uh, in on either side of the pucker so maybe two inches and then re-sew that little area and get rid of that pucker don't take out the whole thing when you just have one pucker here one pucker there just handle handle it where you need it because the more you seam rip a collar, the, the more likely the neckline is going to be to stretch out. So that's why you want to try not to take out the, um, the, the whole collar. Okay, now um, we have this sewn here. So you can go in and grade it at this point. If you're finding it's looking good, everything's connecting well, two ways to grade this. I can go in and just cut this layer, this, this inside layer to half its size, cut it down to a quarter, okay, like this. Or if I'm finding it's still a little too bulky, I can cut this layer too, okay? Or I could go in and just do some diagonal clips. I tend to just cut both of them down to a quarter. If my fabric is really thick, like a wool or a denim, then I'll probably grade it where I'll cut one down to half its size and then I'll cut the other, um, you know, just maybe an eighth or so. Okay, make sure all of this debris here that fell inside, shake that out, make sure none of that is in there. Okay, you don't want, you don't want to close all that up inside, especially if you have a lightweight fabric where you can see that. So now, I'm gonna take a ham and I'm gonna press like this, okay? Press this up here, okay? Press that seam toward the collar. And now what we're gonna do is fold the seam allowance on the upper collar in and it's gonna go right over the top like this, super neat. Now, whenever I have to fold anything in, best sewing trick ever is you just double the line. So if I need to fold in half an inch, I'm gonna draw a line at one inch. Okay, double what you need. Okay, just like this. Double what you need, drag the cut edge to the line, and now I have a perfect half an inch. Okay, so just double what you need and then you can bring the cut edge right up to that and you should be in great shape here for folding in your seam allowance. If your seam allowance is a um, uh, quarter of an inch, draw that line at half an inch. My seam allowance was half an inch, so I drew the line at one inch. And I tend to leave this and not cut it down because that in effect is grading my seam. These are cut down to a quarter. This one is still at a half. So as long as it's not too bulky in there and my collar looks good, I'll keep that at a half. No more than a half. Could even be good to cut it down to three eighths or so. So this is at, this is at a quarter and then this fold could be at three eighths. Okay, so now I have this. I'm gonna take this edge Okay, I really like a knitting needle for this point, this part. And I take this edge and I just can push up all of that 
angled cut, all that debris goes up inside there and I'm getting all of that nice and neat. It sh because I cut at an angle, I shouldn't be, be getting any fraying right there. This is on, um, it's kind of shaped right here around the neck. So I always find it's easy to bring in my ham like this. And I want to press here, okay, like this, and this, okay. get this press, see how clean that is? Everything is all covered up, looking good. And I get that pressed and then I usually go in with glue baste it or double-sided tape, though I find that this works really well. And I'm going to go in and I am going to just put a little bit of glue, not a lot, just run a little bit of glue all the way around here in order to hold this. And I want to hold it over, just slightly over my stitching, just like this. Okay. Then when I, I, then I bring a iron in, iron over it, it just helps it adhere. Okay. Because the way I'm going to close this up is going to be either with a um, hand stitch. I can hand stitch this to the back. I can stitch in the ditch from the other side. I'll show you that. Or I can edge stitch it. All three of those will, clean, will close this up for me. Okay. Um, Let's see, let's get this edge tucked up in there. No fraying. Okay, we have this. One thing too, when you're doing this, make sure that, you see, I have a notch. Let's, let me show you this. I have a notch right here. Is that where my notch is? Where is it? I should have a notch along here. There we go. So your notches should line up with your notches on the neckline if you still have them. That way um, you won't get any diagonal wrinkles. So for instance, let's look at our center back. Do we have our center back? I think that's right here. Here's my center back notch. Here's my center back notch. Make sure that's coming down on top of each other. If that center back notch is moved this way or this way on the collar, you're gonna get diagonal wrinkles. It has to fall perfectly over and sit on top. So there's my center back, there's my center back those two come together right there. Same with your, well, your shoulder notches, we kind of took a little bit with a grain of salt, but um, notches should line up on notches, okay? I have a notch for where my yoke ends right here, but I trimmed it down, so I lost it. Okay, so using a disappearing ink pen or something like that could be helpful, okay? So now look at this collar, it's looking beautiful inside and out, okay? So again, your choice is to close this up. Hand stitch, a kind of a, a blind hem stitch or a fell stitch would work well. I could also, what I usually do is I'll go in and use my edge stitch foot and I'll stitch in the ditch right along here, okay? And that should catch this edge right here perfectly, fairly perfectly. You know stitch in the ditch isn't always perfect on the other side, but it'll catch that. Or I can go in and just do a, a 16th of an inch edge stitch right along here. Again, using my edge stitch foot, okay? Um, or I can mark it with a disappearing ink pen and, um, and sew that in. Any of those three methods will close this up. Okay, um, and it's really a choice. Stitch in the ditch isn't gonna show. Um, edge stitch could, could maybe work with any top stitching you're doing on your collar. Um, uh, and then a hand stitch is always nice for some control. It really looks hidden and beautiful. Okay, so you'll choose which way, how you want to close this up. Um, but we have our nice corners right there. Once you're done with that, then you go in and you can stitch your button placket down and put your buttonholes on, sew up your side seam, hem up your base, okay? Um, so that is how 
you are going to get these nice clean edges on your collar. Let's see how this looks right in here. Let's move this over, okay? So you can see when this comes together, that center front comes together like this, all right? Just like that, and then that collar is gonna come over here. It's gonna come over like that, okay? Just like this. And you get your nice clean collar right there, like what's on the dress form and what's on right here. One thing too about um, your, if you wanted to top stitch this collar, sew your edges. Okay, here's my collar, we're back to this. Sew your edges, press the whole thing, then go in and do your top stitching or any edge stitching if you're choosing to do that on this garment before you put it into your, um, into the shirt, okay? So any top stitching or edge stitching on the collar itself, create that. However, yes, create that. I, I thought of a stumbling block, but that wouldn't apply to this collar, okay? So do your edge stitching, top stitching, and then apply that whole unit into, um, into the shirt. All right. Okay. Now, any cool, oh, lots of questions. I was so focused on my camera. Let's see where, where, where should we start? Um, um, all right, let's see. I am going to go up to the top right here. Um, let's see. Hello to everybody and aloha. Um, Katie, thank you. All these courses on crafts. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. Oh, Montana. Um, okay, good. Let's see. Um, all right. Now, what type of glue do you use? I use this glue based it. Oops. Can we see it over here? No, I want to go over there. Glue based it. It is um, temporary basting glue, two ounces, Roxanne. Roxanne is the brand. Roxanne makes the best basting needles too, if you're not familiar with that brand. Their tools are good. And also, you know, for us garment sewers, keep an eye on those quilters. They have all the good tools and they know how to use it. So um, I'm sure this came through um, as a quilting tool. It's really good. I find it doesn't um, hurt my fabric. It doesn't show up. Use it sparingly. I'm, I like double-sided sewing tape as well, but this, this is better. It doesn't gum up the needle. Um, yeah, I love it. it, and it the double-sided sewing tape doesn't work in curves. I love it to put in my zippers and all of that, but if I have a curve, I'm going to be grabbing that. And remember to press over it. If you press over double-sided sewing tape or glue baste it, it adheres really nicely. All right, um, let's see. Yes, this is great for camp shirts. So um, this collar is good for Henleys. This is the collar that you're gonna use on a Henley as well. All right, um, okay. Okay, good. Um, any other questions about this or anything else? I'm happy to answer. Nope, okay. Um, let me know if I got all your questions here. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So that is how you are going to sew this camp collar. Definitely track it down either in building patterns or any other pattern making book that has this type of collar. It, it truly is foolproof. You are, it, it just works beautifully in any fabric it's genderless um, and it, it's it's easy. It's, that, it's just an all-in-one collar that works. It, and the reason it works so well every time is because it's full bias. So it really wraps around the neck beautifully. If your fabric is a little drapey, like a rayon or a silk, uh, it might be too drapey on those, those types of fabrics, satin weave fabrics maybe. But if you interface it, you should be fine too. It just It just works every time. I love it. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, good. Let me know if anything comes up, but I hope you enjoy sewing this as much as I do. Just follow these, um, these steps and you should have a perfect collar every time. All right. Thank you.